What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean, and today we're talking about Ventus. No, not that Ventus. We're talking about the MSI RTX 3080 Ventus. Alright, this review is not sponsored by anybody but me, so if you would subscribe to the channel and maybe use our Amazon affiliate links down below, that really helps out and helps me keep bringing videos like this to you. Now there's already a lot of reviews on the 3080 in general, and a lot of benchmarks, you know, comparing it to other GPUs and everything, and a lot of those have focused on 4K and 1080p results, but myself, I game at 1440p high refresh, so that's what I'm going to focus on for the game testing in this review. Starting off with the design and what comes in the box, this is a pretty straightforward card. It's um, mostly black and silver and white. There's no RGB on it at all. And it does come with a support bracket in the box, which is pretty helpful because this is a really long and heavy card. I have a Corsair 460X RGB case, and with the fans and the radiator in the front, this thing barely squeaks in there. It's right around 12 inches long, or you know, about 0.9 spatulas. As far as performance goes, the out-of-the-box clock says it's in the 1700s, but with a little bit of undervolt, I'm able to keep it up in closer to the 1875 to 1900 megahertz range. On this card, I do get crashes if I get it close to 2000 megahertz though. I'm not sure if that's because of the power limit or what. This is a 2 times 8 pin connector card, and some of the other cards have 3 power connectors and a higher power limit, so if you want those higher clocks, you may want one of the more expensive three connector cards, but this one is performing really well. With a little bit of manual tuning, I was able to get my scores up in the Port Royal benchmark, and I was actually able to get in the top 100 with a score of almost 12,000. I don't have any like professional tools for measuring the fan noise or anything like that, but to my ear, it's not super loud. Out of the box, you will hear it, you know, it's not um, super quiet, but it's not going to be super loud under load either. I have gone in and set a manual fan curve, and with that, there's basically not a noticeable difference to me in noise, and I'm getting cooler temperatures, and it pretty much stays under 70C all the time, which is pretty nice. Out of the box, it was getting closer to 75C under load. A lot of the benchmarks I've seen so far have compared the 3080 against the 2080, but since they call it the new flagship, I think it makes the most sense to compare it against the 2080 Ti. So let's get into some game results, and we'll see how this runs side by side with some footage of the RTX 2080 Ti at 1440p. Alright, first up we got a couple benchmarks. This here is 3D Mark Fire Strike, and you can see that on the right we're just doing about 20 more frames per second. This is just the 1080p version, and we only scored about 2,000 more on the 3080. Next, this is Port Royale. This is the ray tracing demo from 3D Mark, And on this one, on the 2080 Ti, we scored a little over 9,000. And then the stock, we got almost 11,000 on the 3080. But then with some tuning, I was able to hit that one score that was almost 12,000. Next, we have Forza Horizon 4. And this played really well on extreme and ultra settings. And you can see here that we got about 20 more frames per second again on the 3080. So it was enough to push it up over 144. Now we have Red Dead Redemption 2. And this ran really well again. Um, this was a, another similar improvement uh, over the 2080. There was no real dips or anything. And it stayed really almost around 90 plus frames in all of these uh, gameplay type areas of the benchmark. I was pretty impressed with it. And you can see here on the result that we got about 20 more frames, both on the maximum and the average. Alright, next up is Minecraft, and we're going to start out here playing on the 2080 Ti. This is playing at 1440p and using DLSS, and you can see it's getting about 90 to 100, 110 frames per second. And that's a really good looking and really playable experience, but you can always do a little bit better. So switching over to the 3080, here we're getting about 100 to up to about 144 frames in some areas. Um, it's a really noticeable jump over the 2080 Ti here in the ray tracing performance. Yeah, even here in the really dense parts of this level, it's keeping the frames up really high. So I'm impressed with the ray tracing performance here on the 3080. And this is one great looking game too with the ray tracing enhancement. 
I'm not a big Minecraft player, but I like floating around and looking at these levels because they've just got all types of crazy stuff going on. Just, uh, this isn't a comparison, this is just a little bit of uh, gameplay from the RTX version of Quake. And I have this running at the highest settings. I think I had everything except some thick glass setting turned on because it defaulted to off. So anyways, everything else is at the high ray tracing settings. And it was keeping everything up at above 60 frames per second. So I was pretty happy with that. It definitely didn't keep it up that high on the 2080 Ti. And um, I still am not so great at Quake. <laughs> I was more of a Doom fan back in the day myself. Going back to this now, it's actually kind of funky. Like the delay between when you shoot and when the bullets actually travel. It's a lot different than shooters today. Overall, I'd say, you know, I'm pretty happy with this for the price. It's performing pretty solid so far, and it's a definite generational leap up from the 2080 Ti. As far as the Ventus itself, I mean, it's one of the more value-oriented cards. So if you're not wanting to spend over 800 bucks, and maybe, you know, you have a power supply that only has the two 8 pins, it's a good choice. With the bracket on there, it takes up about three slots altogether, so it is a big boy and it is 12 inches long. So you're going to want to make sure that you have plenty of space in your case and you want to make sure that the card has plenty of breathing room too. I don't think I'd want to sandwich this thing up against the glass on the side panel in a vertical mount or something like that. So it may not be the highest clocking card, but if you can get your hands on one of these, I think you're going to be pretty happy with it for the price. It comes in a lot closer to the Founders Edition, and it has a really straightforward look that I think a lot of people might actually like over some of the other models. Thanks for watching along. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like down below, and make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to have a bunch more content with the Ventus 3080 coming up soon. Later on this week, I have an LG 34 inch ultra wide monitor coming in. And so if you're interested in seeing some 1440p ultra wide benchmarks with the 3080, make sure you're subscribed for those too. And I'll see you in the next video. We're talking about the MSI RTX 2080, or er, 3080. Whoa!